It's a honor for me to be here uh, with you this morning. Uh, actually, I, I'm impressed because I, I thought, what would it be like if, uh, if we asked the diplomatic corps and uh, all those people interested into European affairs to come, come at this unearthly hour to talk Europe, uh, say, in Vilnius? There would be uh, many more empty chairs of the Sampere show. I'm, I'm experienced that a couple of times already. And as, as uh, thanks for, 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 for kind introduction. And uh, as you mentioned, yes, in a way, in a way uh, I'm, well, voucher turn, 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 turn gamekeeper because more or less all my conscious diplomatic life I, I spent doing uh, what I call a hot hardcore security policy businesses and uh, now I switch to the to the other side of uh, Brussels because uh, when at NATO when at NATO we call the Carter European the dark side of Brussels and now and now I I realize that that's the dark side uh, uh, what, what is being called dark side of uh, the Carter European is NATO, actually. And uh, which gives me a um, slightly different and yet uh, propitious perspective on, on, on many challenges that, that lies ahead of us. What I'm going to do this morning is... Uh, outlining, broadly speaking, outlining the priorities of the Lithuanian presidency of the EU Council. And then, then I, I offer my full attention to you for questions, uh, comments, suggestions, advices. We badly need advices. As, as, as Madam Chair said, it is the first time for us. and. Uh, uh, we are very excited to take on this this task, and we say that that we come prepared, and most importantly, we we uh, uh, and I personally would be very um, glad to hearing your critics. Slamming, lambasting, and cetera, because actually it is the negative experience that we learn from. That comes from my, um, uh, so to speak, philosophical background, because I, I used to be educated to become a philosopher, and uh, well, now I landed being a, a diplomat in charge for, for European affairs. Interesting history though but what I learned about 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 Europe and uh, presidencies for a uh, during the last 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 year that that I that I was asked to uh, uh, to, uh, to to lead the preparation for and at my level, the presidency of the EU Council. First, I learned was that actually it is for the ties of that the presidencies are remembered. And for all small, nitty, gritty, uh, yet very visible and uh, optical things. But I'd rather I'd rather wanted to talk with you about uh, uh, yeah partially covering and uh, touching upon uh, some organizational issues, but 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 on substance, on legislative dossiers, and 
the overall European context uh, that we that we have <coughs> nowadays. It's a crazy. I'm not. I I not used to it either. Yes, but let me let me uh, say a few words about the uh, general backdrop that 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 we gonna go uh, uh, through uh, our presidency. Uh, next year it would be the tenth anniversary of uh, Lithuanian membership in both EU and NATO. And believe me or not. And even though I, I said uh, at the very beginning that actually uh, uh, if it were in Vilnius, I, 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 could, uh, I could bet actually the, the, uh, the audience wouldn't be that big uh, as, 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 as we have it uh, here this, this, this morning. But the public support for, 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 for EU such as incredibly high, uh, possibly the highest in Europe. Even though we went through very bad economic crisis. The uh, GDP fell down 2009 by, Im just imagine, 15 percent. And now we're back on a recovery track. Now the GDP is a uh, is a uh, is 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 growing by by three percent a year, and uh, and uh, it is in the. Uh, government's program to, to introduce euro by uh, in 2015 meaning that we have to be fit uh, uh, to be fit for it uh, and uh, satisfy all the master criteria by by 2015 though some people say we uh, we we possibly could satisfy a uh, master criteria already at the end of this year, but this this still remains to be seen. But uh, the message is this: we are very huh, incredibly pro-European country, and Lithuania will will try successfully this time introduce Euro 2015. Now about the uh, the process that we went through in uh, in the run up for the presidency. And by the way, today it is the 16th, yeah, 16th day before we take over from our Irish colleague. And let me simply say that we are that we lucked out being in the same trio with our Irish colleagues, because we you helped. A lot. Yes, we have a, a joint uh, joint trio program that we presented uh, beginning of this year uh, in the General Affairs Council of the EU. Uh, it went down very well with the ministerial audience uh, when presented. Uh, but more than that, we are very glad that you. Uh, we're willing to help us by 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 training and uh, learning our diplomats and civil servant that would be uh, uh, dealing with the European affairs. Uh, as many secondaries were sent out to, to to Irish institutions to to be on the spot, and uh, we'll take uh, advantage of of of. of of their knowledge uh, and uh, and experiences gathered uh, here in Dublin uh, enormously. Uh, first, we uh, we started our preparations well a couple of years ago by 
agreeing uh, by securing the political agreement in the parliament on the presidency priorities. And uh, uh, those were at, at those time uh, that the uh, uh, gist of the matter uh, during Lithuania's presidency spell would be a focus on uh, energy security, Eastern partnership, uh, Baltic Sea region, and uh, EU external border. But but then uh, we uh, thought it uh, thought it would be uh, even more more useful and propitious to somehow mainstream those priorities into the in, in, in into what on, on the European table and though and and, and this is uh, how we came came up with the slogan of uh, credible growing and open Europe to which I uh, uh, get back in, in a minute. We are small, small administration, a small country. Uh, we trained, we picked up and trained uh, around uh, 1,500 uh, public servants who would be directly tasked to deal with the European affairs, meaning chair the working parties or working groups. Uh, plus, as you said, uh, yes, we have uh, we have uh, new government in place. New, in a sense, that it's uh, it's uh, operational uh, since uh, since uh, December last year. Still, it's very committed government to the European businesses and. Again, we lucked out, as uh, Madam Chair uh, put it, uh, uh, by having a president uh, who is uh, extremely knowledgeable in uh, European affairs. And we are small, small budget, uh, low budget presidency either. Uh, because it is in all or in the in the law that we cannot exceed for running the presidency uh, 62 million euros. The way that we're gonna organize uh, our chairmanship is a. Uh, called Brussels-based, meaning that the very broad maximum mandate, leeway, leverage, will to negotiate over the, uh, uh, all the uh, very well, complex and complicated legislative dossiers and other initiatives will be given to our people in Brussels. We strengthened our permanent representation in Brussels by sending out a, well, uh, our top people, best uh, experts, diplomats, and specialists uh, to support to support our permanent representation in Brussels, and in most cases and instances the owners uh, would be on them to negotiate. It would be run rather from Brussels than from Vilnius. And uh, this may sound as a little bit uh, contradiction to what I said uh, a minute ago. Then we came up uh, with the uh, um, not an idea, but uh, and not a thought, but with the bare principle that we gonna be a honest broker uh, when sharing of the uh, when sharing the uh, EU Council, meaning that we will not push for our 
so to speak, national priorities. And uh, I, uh, like I said, uh, the, 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 the parliament uh, stressed that uh, Lithuania as a country would, would, uh, would, would push for for four national priorities, but then we uh, uh, we had many many sessions with the parliament and and and, and uh, ended up by by agreeing that the slogan of our presidency would be credible, growing, and open Europe. And now I'll disclose what what's in there. Uh huh. But before that, just imagine the bad, the backdrop of uh, against which our presidency will be run. Of course, you know. You you are specialists and experts, and you know. The political context uh, uh, the European election uh, approaching uh, now scheduled for May two thousand fourteen. Then the elections and now uh, some some member states plus the very end of legislative cycle of of of, of the eu uh, meaning that the most difficult dossiers um, well still that's <laughs> that's why they are most difficult because uh, nobody nobody uh, managed to to uh, to crack them uh, yet. So uh, we we gonna engage with the enormous numbers of files, legislative files. All in all, there there are bit between. Three and five hundred of them, and uh, and I'm talking only about legislative dossiers, dossiers that we have to negotiate uh, on on uh, on the, the European Parliament to get the agreement with the European Parliament if we want to to to, to close them down. It's a record number. Uh, if you looked at the at the other presidencies, especially uh, after the Lisbon Treaty is in place. Um, but again, and, and now coming back to the priorities. Well, in principle, the priorities of both Irish and Lithuanian presidencies perfectly dovetailed. Actually. That they are more or less the the same uh, linguistically. They may sound a little bit uh, different, but <laughs> uh, but uh, ensuring financial stability, caring and uh, caring for uh, <coughs> and caring for all the initiatives aimed at uh, boosting the economic growth and uh, taking care of. Uh, Europe's position in the world uh, are the same, and uh, that was that was stressed during uh, uh, Tishok uh, visit uh, to Vilnius uh, last week, and uh, Ambassador Ambassador Porlis uh, uh, and I myself we. Uh, we uh, were part of the meeting with the president and uh, and the uh, president and Tishok, and uh, that was uh, stressed a couple of times. That actually we we are in a very propitious uh, situation from this from this point of view that we are sharing absolutely the same priorities. Thus. Our priorities are, broadly speaking, focus on credible, growing, and open Europe. What it is, credible Europe? 
will not read out what's 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 uh, on display but uh, but I simply say that hmm, basically it means for us work on implementing fiscal compact balancing national budget prudent application of stability and growth pact reinforced by six pack and in, a, <laughs> in turn this being reinforced by two pack uh, strengthening budgetary surveillance uh, uh, mechanism in uh, in in euro area meaning that it's the same uh, as a two pack uh, discussing ex ante coordination uh, mechanism of uh, major economic re reforms across uh, uh, EU and uh, last but not least working on a banking union and first first of course it is about uh, Uh, it's a little bit technical, but but in essence, it's a very political uh, bank resolution and recovery directive, uh, single resolution mechanism regulation, uh, deposit guarantee scheme directive. These are three basic uh, and most important. Uh, issues with regard to uh, to the banking union that we take on from the very first day on in, 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 in the in the presidency then of course uh, progress on negotiation uh, on a single resolution mechanism but that that's already in the pipeline that politically agreed, agreed uh, but uh, but still uh, some, some legislative work needs to be uh, to be uh, completed uh, and then protecting of course uh, financial interest of EU and uh, its uh, its uh, member states uh, there are a couple of legislative uh, initiatives uh, related to, 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 to this particular point uh, uh, Plus, agreeing on actions uh, to fight against tax fraud, tax evasion, uh, and uh, focusing on anti uh, anti uh, money laundering files. And it wouldn't be possible to do, of course, without securing well, without securing uh, citizens' consent to it, because the you may have heard about the uh, building blocks uh, of uh, economic and monetary union, and the, the fourth block says, says about the need to involve uh, and to, to secure the uh, legitimacy and accountability of what, of what we're doing in the uh, uh, in the European Union. But uh, but for this, first we 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 have to secure our well citizens interest consent and assent to what to what we are doing in Europe uh, and uh, uh, particularly this year as we have uh, the European year of citizens uh, perfectly suits uh, suits the purpose by the way the very last event of Lithuanian presidency will be devoted to the European years of citizen The second priority, we call it growing Europe. And uh, this is, uh, well, I've heard some, before coming here, uh, I, I heard some promising news about, about possible agreement on MFF because that's the that's the heart of the matter for for for, for, for us. 
to stimulate uh, European economies, first we have to get a deal on EU budget clinched. Budget meaning budget for 2014 and for, for the next seven years, meaning a multi-annual financial program. And I know how hard the Irish presidency has been working on it and still working, and I keep my fingers crossed that that you're going to succeed on securing that at least political deal on MFF. Leaving us with the humble 56 legal acts uh, to be adopted before, before the end of this year, just allowing the money to start flowing. So the MFF and all the emanating legislative dossiers from MFF 56 uh, of them would be at the very heart of uh, our endeavors uh, with regard to boosting growth in Europe. But then, of course, EU internal market for growth, as we say. It, uh, here we're going to focus on a digital agenda like 10 tele, e-identification, uh, e-invoicing, uh, and a couple of other e-things plus broadband, and cost reduction, and now, well, shouldn't be saying that on the record, but still, uh, but now traveling extensively, actually commuting between Vilnius, Brussels, and Strasbourg. And uh, when, I, when I looked up at the <coughs> telephone bills that I have to pay for roaming, actually. Now, yes, I, 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 I would go with the Commissioner Nelly Cross proposal of uh, uh, roaming for Europe. Uh, then, of course, network security. And, uh, and uh, as I understand, later on today, uh, you're going to have, uh, have uh, Commissioner Malmström speaking uh, with a focus on cybersecurity. And now we know what it is to be, to be under cyber attack. You, you may have heard that the major, uh, major uh, internet news portal uh, in Lithuania was, was, was under uh, huge cyber attack uh, recently, actually a couple of weeks ago. And uh, so uh, we gonna spend some, 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 uh, some, working party party days on uh, mainstreaming uh, cybersecurity dimension into the digital uh, single market uh, portfolio. Then, of course, uh, our focus will be on completion of a single market act one and making as much progress as we only can uh, on single market act two. Then, of course, uh, research, industry, innovation framework, Horizon 2020 will be, uh, again, uh, under our uh, top-notch priorities. And uh, better regulation, better government, governance, uh, economic governments, and, of course, SMEs, and uh, services market uh, will 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 fall under uh, priorities uh, as well. Employment and boosting employment uh, is a critical issue, and uh, you may know that the June uh, European Council will will have as its focus uh, you youth unemployment problem and uh, we're gonna work hard on uh, youth guarantee schemes and uh, apprenticeship program and 
called Alliance for Apprenticeship. And uh, this, is, this is where our uh, uh, national pain and uh, European priorities again perfectly dovetail is a uh, is work on uh, energy market completion of EU energy market of course with the deadline of two the that deadline for completion of EU energy market by 2040 rapidly approaching of course we gonna gonna uh, give our full attention to this file plus getting rid of energy islands in Europe, Lithuania being one of them. As you may know, Lithuania is still energy island in the EU. And for this, yeah, it may sound a little bit technical again, but uh, we're gonna push for proper implementation of the third energy package, market design, integration of uh, renewables, first Europe wide list uh, of uh, uh, projects of common interest, and last but not least, solid dimension of uh, external aspects of EU energy policy. And then, uh, it's uh, already Baltic, Baltic slant. Uh, we're gonna, we gonna have this uh, big overarching review of the Baltic and then you uh, and macro regional strategies of the European Union, and it is especially pertinent now, as 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 we witness the uh, flooding in uh, Central Europe. Uh, it was uh, last week, actually, because the the gist of the of both strategies is mm, caring about uh, environment. By the way, the, the, <laughs> the Baltic uh, Sea strategy could be could be in, uh, encapsulated in uh, three simply in uh, three short sentences: save the sea connect the region and increase <coughs> prosperity. Same goes, uh, same is true with, the, uh, with regard to Danube strategy. Huh, and this is where we come to beloved, uh, if, if it were my minister for foreign Affairs, uh, uh, in he would he would talk. He would of course talk uh, about uh, mostly about uh, open Europe, about possible relations between EU and NATO, and most importantly about Eastern Partnership and Eastern Partnership Summit. Uh, uh, well, uh, yes, this is a uh, third big priority, <laughs> broadly speaking, of a Lithuanian presidency of the EU Council. So we we gonna uh, host the third Eastern Partnership Summit in uh, in Vilnius, in November 28-29. Would be appropriate place now to, to say it for the record that that we take that Irish Prime Minister already gave its word to, to, to be there. Uh, what we look at are the tangible deliverables that we can reasonably achieve during the summit. First of all, 
we're working on uh, making it possible to sign association agreement with Ukraine. Uh, with the integrated uh, part of it uh, called Deep and Comprehensive Free Trade Agreement. Then possibly uh, initialing similar agreements uh, with a couple of other countries like uh, Moldova, Georgia and Armenia. And uh, moving the process of uh, visa facilitation and liberalization further. That's pretty ambitious agenda. And, 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 and my, my minister wow, spends an uh, incredible amount of time and energy working, uh, working uh, to. to to secure the uh, uh, agreement and the willingness of European and partner countries leaders for those uh, tangible deliverables to be achieved uh, at the Vilnius uh, Eastern Partnership Summit. Uh, but of course, uh, we, we, we do our utmost to continue with the enlargement process. Because we are very, well, it is possibly already in our blood, it's a, it's a pro enlargement inclination. Because it was 15, good 15 years ago that, that we created so called Vilnius Group, gathering together all the countries at, those, uh, at that time aiming at uh, getting into both EU and NATO, and now absolute majority of them uh, are already there, but uh, the, finish, uh, the, 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 the job is still not finished. Uh, and we're going to continue with uh, Montenegro, Turkey, possibly uh, Mm, starting negotiation with Serbia, even with Kosovo, advancing as far as we can uh, uh, other Western Balkan countries on their way on, on their way to uh, to the EU. Then uh, under this this priority of course falls what what what's very close to, to Irish but uh, not less to Lithuanian hearts uh, TTA um, 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 free trade agreement uh, with the United States and uh, other strategic partners like like Japan but plus Canada plus Mercosur plus possibly other uh, uh, Southeast Asian countries will see uh, what's 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 doable. But of course, the uh, the main focus would be on a TTAP and uh, negotiations with Japan. And it is today that actually that the Trade Council could possibly give negotiating mandate for 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 uh, for EU negotiators to go on uh, and to engage with Americans uh, on it. Uh, then uh, uh, we're going to do some extra work on uh, uh, effective control of EU external borders. Again, it's uh, it, uh, perfectly coincide with our national priority, if I may say so. Because uh, 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 having one of the big, largest, longest uh, EU external borders, of course, it, it is quite natural for Lithuania to take on this, this issue. What I mean here is... Um, uh, 
smart smart borders concept entry exit uh, system register travel program and of course uh, just many priorities are cross cutting the uh, they, they, they are horizontal and uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, it's in a way related to a uh, uh, say anti smuggling plan for cigarette and alcohol. So we gonna do an extra work on this. Plus, of course, we traditionally uh, we. Uh, uh, as every presidency is expected, we uh, we gonna devote our due attention to EU uh, development policies and uh, trying, uh, though it's difficult, but, and trying to uh, at least a little bit to do on a EU NATO relationship. What would it be like during 20 weeks of our presidency? Because, well, we have, uh, we, we will have a uh, European Parliament uh, in recess in August and then before, before Christmas. So all in all, we, we're going to have 20 weeks to close between three and 500 legislative files. Uh, Pretty <clears throat> well, difficult and yet surmountable task, and uh, the biggest events during our presidency gonna be, uh, of course, the Third Eastern Partnership Summit, and uh, uh, forum for uh, Baltic Sea. Uh, region then ICT conference by the way uh, uh, where where we expect to 5,000 participants to be present and uh, since we are so much devoted to move on the, the uh, completion of EU energy market, uh, internal energy market, uh, we're gonna do some extra high level event on, on energy. Ah, most important thing actually and uh, we we started waiting extensively now and uh, all the news about the presidency might be found uh, if you if you want it so uh, following uh, my president's Twitter account ministers Twitter account and actually myself That would be a short, a short version of uh, of where we are with our priorities of the uh, of the EU uh, Council presidency. Uh, but I gather the most important part uh, um, starts now uh, and. Uh, and uh, and and uh, I offer my my full attention now to to, to engage with you, but uh, please off off the record. So uh, thanks for 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 your attention. Now I I glad to 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 answer all the questions and take on all your comments, suggestions, and advices. Please advise us.